In the previous session, we introduced the kind of knowledge you'll need to start working with resources with Foundation. Data for loading the raw contents of resources, and how to handle resource methods that throw errors. In this session, we'll be taking that knowledge and starting to work with local file resources. We'll start by looking at Foundation bundles. This is the type you'll be using most often to access resources in modern applications. We'll also do a short coverage of the Foundation File Manager, which is the traditional method used to access local resources, although decreasingly used nowadays. Finally, we'll take a look at how to handle coding the popular JSON data format. Users on macOS may already be familiar with the bundle concept. Bundle is both a foundation type and a concept you can encounter directly when doing more advanced work with desktop macOS. MacOS is a convenient way to get started with bundles since we're able to access them directly through the file system. It's possible that if you're a desktop macOS user, you've already worked with bundles without even realizing it. If you control click on any macOS application, you'll see the above option, show package contents. Bundle is in fact macOS's concept of a package, something you may also know from other operating systems. Let's have a look inside the Xcode package. Inside we find a contents folder, let's open this. Here we begin finding the full contents of the Xcode package. As you begin to use Xcode more seriously, you may find yourself becoming familiar with some of these directories. But for now, understand that we've just manually explored a bundle. A bundle is in reality just a special kind of folder with some particular requirements and structure. macOS applications are a very good example of this. It allows developers to package their entire application in a single unit that appears opaque to the user. However, applications aren't the only kind of bundle. In fact, we've already been working with bundles when coding in Swift. When was this? In fact, an Xcode Playground is itself a bundle. Click on the Playground's file name in the top bar. The title will expand and you'll see two entries, Sources and Resources. An Xcode Playground is actually a bundle, which can contain these two special folders. Both of these entries are greyed out. You won't be able to open them yet because they don't exist. Before we demonstrate how to create these folders, let's explain their purpose first. Sources are supporting code for the main playground. If you'd like to share a playground, this allows you to keep the non-primary helper supporting code hidden from the user. The more interesting folder right now is resources. This is where you can copy any files you'd like to use and load in your playground. This folder will be the primary focus right now. Before we go on, let's make sure you know how to create these folders inside your own playground file. Let's create a new playground now and create the sources and resources folder and copy a simple text file into the resources. So I'm just creating the playground now and save this on the desktop. Now, as we saw before, we can click on the title of the playground here and we see the two folders which don't exist right now. My playground is here on the desktop. Another way we can access the bundle more quickly is to right click or control click on the playground itself and go to show in finder. And here we see the finder window open with the playground visible here. So just as we demonstrated with the Xcode application package, we can right click or control click on the playground file, show package contents. As we can see, there's a Swift file inside here, which is the current content of the main playground file. And there's some metadata here in this file. Now we're simply going to create new folders in here, one called sources and one called resources. And if we return to the playground, click on the title again, we'll see that these are no longer grayed out but there's no contents in there right now. So let's go to resources. I have a simple text file here. I'm just going to drag it into the resources folder. Now, if we return to the playground, look in resources, we can see that our example text file is now available. And when we start working with bundle, we'll be able to locate that and load its contents.